Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this open event about uh, our program, uh, Real Estate Economics and Investment Analysis. This is a master program um, here at uh, UCL at the Barnes School of Sustainable Construction. Um, I'm very excited about the opportunity to tell you about uh, this master program. It's a very uh, dear uh, master to me. Uh, I, I came into UCL uh, when the master started and I helped create it from the ground up. So it's very, um, it's, it's a very dear piece of, of, of the ballet um, for me. And I hope I can transmit this, uh, this to you and, 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 and explain exactly what it is that we're trying to do uh, in this master and what you will get from it if you, um, if you so choose uh, to come and, and, and let us teach uh, real estate to you. So I'm Nicolas Duran. I am the deputy director uh, of this program. Uh, the director, Nicolas Zumilo, um, he, he couldn't be here uh, today, he's on leave. Um, so I will be walking you through uh, what it is that we do here and what it is that you will get uh, from this master. After that, we'll do uh, some Q and A, so you can ask whatever uh, whatever doubts and questions come up during the presentation. Uh, and if you have any other uh, questions, you can, uh, or if you have questions uh, during the presentation, you can write them in the chat. Uh, we're going to have time there uh, uh, replying to some of them. Um, so in this presentation, what I will do is I will try to put the uh, master in context. So uh, what, you know, I'll talk a bit about the university, a bit about the department, a bit about of the institute where this uh, master takes place, uh, and then talk in detail about the master itself, uh, telling you exactly what it is that you should expect you're going to be taught here and what type of experience as a student you will get. Um, and what are these prospects? What do we envision is uh, uh, the future for you, if you if you come and, and have a, a, a master and have these and, and teach and, and sorry and learn through this program with us. Um, so first of all, uh, obviously, this is a, a master in UCL. UCL is a top ten uh, university in the world, so you should expect uh, uh, you know top of uh, frontier in knowledge um, uh, insights. From, from your lecturers. And on top of that, the Bartlett itself is the number one faculty for the built environment. So if you're thinking of where should I do, uh, where should I do a master in real estate and you real estate is essentially built environment. Well, the number one build, uh, the number one faculty in the world for the built environment is clearly uh, a good start. And it is a very, uh, it is a fantastic place about it because it is diverse, it's inclusive, it's private, it's buzzing uh, every time um, I'm around. It's, it's really interesting because you, you research and you learn from so many uh, different disciplines in the Barlet. And that is something that makes this faculty very unique. Um, uh, I know that if you would come here, you will find it, you will find the environment of the of the Barlet, uh, a very particular one, and one that will be very fulfilling and, very, and may, will make the experience uh, extremely, extremely nice for you. Um, within the uh, Barlet, so within the Faculty of the Built Environment, we are in the Department of uh, Sustainable Construction or the School of Sustainable Construction. Um, this is also a fantastic place. Uh, this department is one of the biggest in the faculty. And it brings together a multidisciplinary array of uh, academics and researchers that you know go all the way from project management to economics, going through construction and engineering. So it is a very diverse environment, and you will have loads of synergies to uh, so from le from learning not just from us in uh, real estate economics uh, and investments, but also from people that are dedicated to construction, that are dedicated to engineering, that are dedicated to uh, management uh, practices. The school itself, it focuses on construction, obviously, uh, and how uh, we manage built assets. So built assets, we refer to um, when we talk about buildings, mainly when we talk about things that, got, that get built, 
Yeah? And for this, obviously, real estate is very important. But recently, the school has moved uh, its focus more to a climate change economics. So um, how do you account for emissions? Uh, how do you, um, uh, how are you able to tackle uh, emissions in, in different sectors of the economy? And in particular, and one that is very important on real estate and how do you make sure that real estate is uh, sustainable? Because real estate is a fundamental and a large, large sector in what comes down to uh, emissions. Real estate is uh, responsible for over 40% of emissions worldwide. So the built environment is, is responsible for over 40% of emissions. So it is fundamental that you learn how to think about real estate in a sustainable way. And no better place to do that than an actual construction environment. So you get synergies with all those other disciplines uh, from um, for learning about real estate and, and for getting a better picture of what's important in real estate. Within the department, so within the School of Sustainable Construction, lays the Real Estate Institute. Yeah? And this is a new unit in Varla. So this is a place that uh, got created um, not too long ago. And the fundamental drive of its creation is to bridge the gap between academic ideas and real world practice. So if you, um, if you don't bridge this gap, you will have academ academics uh, looking at the real world from their ivory tower and not really uh, caring about what needs to be researched, what needs to be asked, what needs, what solutions does the industry, practitioners, people really working in real estate need, but rather you will just be um, satisfying your own interests and your own research uh, questions, um, whatever it is uh, the field you're in. Uh, however, we try to uh, connect and really work with industry in a way that whatever we do is actually impactful, does have an application in the real world, is actually something that is going to be um, looked for by the industry. And in this respect, uh, what we will teach you will have this focus as well. We won't be giving you abilities that are not being demanded in the market. We're actually uh, striving for giving you what is at the highest demand uh, possible in the industry. So you get out of this, uh, so you come out of this master um, with the set of skills that will land you the best possible career path. Uh, in this, in the Institute, we are really interested in everything that has to be with man with buildings, in particular, how you develop, how you operate, how you finance, anything real estate related. Yeah. So why would you want to know more about um, real estate investments? Well, real estate, if you take all of the real estate and combine it and uh, put a valuation, put a price tag to it, it becomes the largest asset class there is. Yeah? By asset class, I mean things you can invest in, right? So put together all the housing, put together all the buildings, all the uh, industrial installation, all the infrastructure, and you get the largest by value asset class in the world, more than equity, more than bonds, more than funds, more than anything like this. So it is of fundamental importance for the economy, for financial markets, and uh, as of late and as uh, uh, as as a as a trend, it has uh, it has been having uh, growing interest from investors, very very uh, much so because uh, it has proven to be a very important asset to have in one's portfolio. So if you are an investor. Containing real, real estate in your portfolio has many, many um, advantages to which I'm not going to go into now, but these are the kind of things you will learn in, in, a, in, a, in a master program. It is also a very particular type of asset. Why is that? Because a real estate is by definition rooted to a place. And that particular characteristic, the fact that it's rooted to one specific place, will uh, make it uh, have specific uh, idiosyncratic characteristics. So 
it'll be surrounded by a particular culture. It'll have a particular set of rules in terms of laws, in terms of profits, et cetera, uh, that will govern the way you manage, uh, a, say, a building or some asset. So if you're thinking about investing in, in, in real estate, you really need to think about what are the idiosyncratic characteristics that govern the particular place you're looking for, you know, you're looking for investing in. On top of that, even though there are very uh, specific characteristics at the market level, it, there is a growing demand from international investors. So capital flow into specific markets on which people invest in the real estate of those markets. So it has this very um, uh, characteristic balance between market idiosyncratic and international interest. In addition, it is very traditional. It is possibly the uh, oldest asset class there is. Lands and rents exist since there is private property. And it's probably, or it is mainly what has sparked the study of economics, land and rents from that. So it is very, very traditional, the industry. However, it is ready for a change. It has been for a while. And the change, it is fundamentally data-driven, fundamentally evidence-based decision-making. It is um, a change that is slow in pace, but it's definitely coming. And it is the one that we are trying to get ahead of. And we're gonna give you the skills to actually promote that change, to be the generation that, it, that uh, imposes this change and that rips benefit from it as well. And last but not least, definitely, uh, obviously, Real estate is fundamental. So how you invest in real estate is fundamental for climate change. So it's fundamental for the future, for the future climate of our planet. As I said before, real estate is, is responsible for over 40% of uh, total emissions. So how you think about investing in real estate has massive consequences for the environment. How you think about retrofitting buildings, how about you think about demolishing and building new buildings that has potential um, huge potential income uh, impacts for uh, climate change in the future. But it's not just investments, it's economics as well, and the way we uh, analyze investments, the things that um, we're going to teach in this master. So how you decide, how people decide, how firms decide, how governments decide uh, what to, where to locate, uh, how much to pay for uh, different assets or different real estate assets, where to invest in. All of these decisions are economic in uh, its nature. So the underlying market structures and the underlying economic decisions that really drive all of these, um, uh, all, all that we see real estate related is very, very important. And this is also part of our, of our teaching. So you need to understand what theories lay behind the decision-making process that the, uh, say, a firm to locate in one place, but not another. Uh, a transport system, what is the impact of a transport system in the location that households decide to locate in? Why a certain area is residential, but not industrial area, etc. These are all underlying uh, drivers of what we end up observing in the market. And it's fundamental that you understand it to gain a really good um, experience and a really good um, uh, decision process or decision um, ability in, in real estate. And this will all have the connotation or it will all be done through the focus and the lens of data-driven, evidence-based decision-making, which is becoming the norm in industry. Yeah? We will put a lot of focus in this particular aspect. Um, so that we give you the analytical skills which are in high demand at the moment and will continue to, to be so, in, if not more, uh, in, in the future to come. All of these is how we differentiate from other programs. We are the main program giving analytical skills, the proper focus, putting it center, uh, putting in the center stage of the entire program so that you come out of here with the proper skills that the industry is demanding. Having said this, in our department, the just to talk a little bit about the environment in which you will be, 
So at BSSC, there is a lot of real estate research being conducted. And you will benefit from uh, what lecturers such as me and others uh, in the department who are studying uh, real estate related topics. You can talk to them, you can uh, write your dissertations on topics that uh, they can supervise you with. Um, so there's a lot that you can get from being in such an academic environment. Uh, for example, real estate finance and investment. Um, so commercial real estate decisions, uh, should I invest in residential? Should I invest in offices? Why, you know, what's going to happen with offices uh, given the work from home um, trends? Uh, what happens with offices given the demand that employees have uh, for having spacious, well, um, well laid out, uh, you know, with excellent indoor quality conditions in the office? Uh, what are the what are the consequences of you know, what's happening with affordability? Uh, do we invest in residential, even though uh, the affordability crisis is there? Um, asset pricing, how do you value an asset? How do you value an entire building? How do you put a price tag to that? So these are things that we are researching at, at the department. Real estate economics. Here we go to, as I said before, the fundamentals of decision making in these markets. So urban economics, housing, environmental economics. How is air pollution affecting our productivity, our health? Uh, how is that affecting the price of assets in the real estate market? Uh, urban economics, where do firms locate? How much do firms pollute? Uh, where do households locate? What, what are the, what are the intersections of real estate markets and labor markets. So many interesting questions that are being uh, researched at our department in these particular topics. Housing affordability is huge, for example. Uh, we have two lecturers that are experts in housing affordability issues. Asset management, how do you, uh, how do you manage an asset that it has a particular destiny? So, Healthcare, hospital, how you manage a building that is specifically designed for being a hospital or one that is specifically designed for being a school or a university or uh, one that is specifically designed to be a hotel. How do you design this? How, how do you manage these assets? How do you operate these businesses? And of course, construction and development. When, when you talk about real estate, uh, you got to talk about construction and development. And in particular, what's being researched is uh, what where and when you should build, what is it that you should develop, uh, where you should develop it, and when is the right time to develop it. Uh, and of course, this is just the real estate research. The department has a whole other agenda on, on project management, on construction, uh, and on engineering uh, research that you can also uh, benefit from because there are uh, electives that you can uh, select from the entire department. Okay, so why uh, our program? Why RIA? Why Real Estate Economics and Investment Analysis? As I said before, world-class university, top 10, UCL, you can't, uh, you can't do, um, you can't miss that. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer. It is a world class place for the built environment as well. It's the number one faculty in the world for the built environment. So if you're thinking about a real estate uh, program, real estate master program, why not go to the one that is being taught on the number one faculty for it? As I said just now, synergies with construction, with project management, with asset management. And uh, we focus on analytical skills uh, so that we give you the skills that the industry is demanding right now. And we do this unlike any other MC uh, in the UK that I know of. The focus that we put into it is unique to us. Also, very important, there's new, brand new facilities. So there's an entire new building built in uh, Stratford right next to the Olympic Stadium. I actually moved my office there. It's fantastic. I try to go there three times a week at least. And it is such an amazing place, really big, super modern. Um, facilities are just uh, top notch. It's really, uh, it's really superb. It's one of a kind in the UK for sure. Um, it is so spacious and modern and, 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 and there's so much light coming in. It is really, uh, the design is spectacular. And you will be 
having your your teaching here in this fantastic building in classrooms that are designed for type of executive teaching where um you know the uh, discussion is encouraged and there's the the design of the classroom is really uh, done in a way that um conversation is is really encouraged so it is all in all, a fantastic place to be learning from a fantastic program. Now, let me go through uh, each of the modules that you will get at BSC. You know, the, 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 um, these are the uh, mandatory modules. Then you have other electives that that, that you can get uh, from the whole of from the whole department. But in the in term one, you get real estate and urban economics. This one is taught by Nicodem Sumido, so this is for, uh, taught by the director of the program, and 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 he's fantastic. He's extremely smart uh, person, uh, Cambridge educated, so so really, really really good uh, in in all that is economics, and he will give you all the latest theory and research on real estate economics. Um, what this means is. All of the later theories about household location, firm location, transport links, how cities evolve, how cities are formed, why cities look like they look like, why is there a residential outside a, 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 a business center, et cetera. Fantastic pro, uh, module. Financial economics of real estate. This one's taught by uh, Stani Mila Milcheva. Um, and it gives all of the basic concepts in finance that people will most people will already know, uh, but they don't know how they apply to real estate, which is a very specific application. Um, you don't just translate uh, these concepts into real estate um, easily, but she does it in a way that is very intuitive, very practical, uh, with loads of discussion, and um, it really has students uh, very satisfied. Real estate data analysis, and this is the crown jewel of the entire program, uh, because here is where we really teach you uh, what's different in, in our program compared to other modules, to other uh, MSCs around. Uh, here, we will focus on that evidence-based decision-making, so we will really teach you data science. We will really, science is all about if, uh, cause and effect, so we will let you know, or we will teach you how to get um, the latest methods in economics to really disentangle causality. We will really teach you how to uh, be confident about the fact that you have found what is the effect of X on Y in many, many different real estate related questions. And from this uh, module, you're gonna learn how to program in R, for example. You're gonna learn how to handle huge data sets in, uh, for example, on house prices. And you're gonna learn this fundamental skill, which is how do you think about causality? Very, very, very important module in the whole program. Analytical property evaluation, also taught by Nikonen, is um, through data, through loads of data, and through various different techniques and bringing in people from industry to uh, give you their own points of view and their own experience. Uh, how do you put a price tag on a building? How do you value uh, a building or an asset in the real estate market? Yeah, there's many different ways to do it. All of them uh, very analytical and involving lots of data. Nicodem will show you how, how it's done. Property investment analysis, this is my module. And here we, I walk you through the entire process of how you invest on from how you decide on which geography uh, and sub-market. So for example, do I wanna invest in uh, residential in Rio de Janeiro or offices in London or logistics in China? First, you first get that particular view of how you um, analyze different markets and decide on which one is best. Then you look at how does a real estate asset fit into my portfolio and what will it do to my uh, risk return profile. And then I teach you how to look into different assets that are in, um, within the real estate market. And finally, how do you sit down at a table and negotiate a price and actually come to a price that is beneficial to you and gives you the best deal possible. Yeah? And real estate uh, asset management, uh, this one is taught by Yolanda Barnes. Now, Yolanda Barnes is 
another one of our assets in, uh, in, in the program because she uh, participated in industry for over 30 years. So she then became a professor at UCL where now she's teaching in, in our program. So she really knows uh, all the little bits of the industry that are in, fundamental for you to learn and understand before you come into the industry to work. Um, so this is like a fountain of knowledge from which uh, you can derive so much if you really are uh, smart and you build a relationship around uh, Yolanda, you will just know, uh, you, you will have a jump ahead um, once you come out of the master, uh, no doubt. And finally, spatial data analysis. With spatial data analysis, this is another one of my modules. I will be teaching uh, all about geographical information systems. So geographical data, how do you build a map? How do you calculate distances? How do you create analysis based on locations? Uh, so it's all about uh, visuals. It's all about large data sets that are um, geographical in nature uh, or locational in nature so that you can do all sorts of very cool analysis that will complement obviously the real estate data analysis module that you had in the previous term. Okay, so these are um, this is the uh, these are the modules uh, in the program. So this is what we offer now. What we would like or what we aspire to get is applicants that obviously have to be passionate about real estate. Um, you know, they need to think real estate. They need to want to be part of the industry. They need to be want to be part of of the research environment that, that is uh, real estate, either the academic environment or the practitioner's environment, uh, uh, or, or they are already and are passionate about it and just wanna you know, dig deeper into the knowledge of, of all real estate related. Yeah? You're gonna have to be comfortable with numbers and basic statistics. You don't, have, you don't need to be mathematicians or economists, but uh, you will need to have uh, some sort of numeracy and statistics um, uh, at least be comfortable with it. Um, and also programming. If you have some programming background, that's going to be also uh, a, a good additional skill because the data analysis module is really mainly R-driven. Uh, and finally, you need to be interested in economics and investment. Yeah? You need to have uh, these, this particular taste for uh, learning more about how you invest and how you think about economic decisions. <laughs> um, and that is all for me. I hope you enjoyed it. And I pass now to the Q&A if anyone has any questions. I probably have questions in the chat. No, I don't have any questions in the chat. If anyone has a question and would like to, yes, Daniel. Daniel, please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hello. I can hear you now. Ah, great, great. Hi, Inclus. Hi. Uh, uh, thank you for your sharing session, Elia. Uh, I'm Daniel from Malaysia. Um, I have two questions. All right. Um, First one would be, uh, do applicants with relevant work experience and academic backgrounds would have a higher chance of admission compared to those without? That's my first question. Yeah. Um, the second one is, um, how does the program incorporate industry trends and real world case studies into the curriculum? Yeah. So okay. Uh, those are the questions. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Great, thank you, Daniel. Great, great questions. Um, okay, the first one, having an academic background and experience in the industry obviously uh, gives you uh, gives you an edge. I wouldn't say it gives you an advantage because you know we, we deal with every applicant uh, with the exact same uh, measure, uh, but clearly you will have some experience in real estate. You will probably already have some interest in real estate. You definitely are someone um, who, who has uh, learned about uh, real estate. So we'll, you will have perhaps an added value in the, in, in, in the, in the program. Uh, so yeah, it, it would be um, 
it, it would be a good, uh, let's say, a good situation if you if you if you apply. That there's there's good chances that you uh, end up in without obviously any uh, sort of uh, commitment to that. Uh, of course, um, it all depends on on who the other applicants are, and it's a very very competitive. Um, application uh, process. Now, about how to bring in um, real cases uh, from the industry, we do that through guest lectures, and we do that through through our own uh, experience. So, let me give you a few examples. Um, uh, Yolanda Barnes, as I said, she has over thirty years of experience in the industry, researching for subils and, and other other companies, and participating in uh, you know a number of committees and and and, and boards and, and etc. So she knows a lot of people. So I I, I think she brings many people uh, to give uh, guest lectures uh, in her program. Same goes for me. I bring a few guest lecturers from industry and not and, and very important. Uh, people, so people with uh, positions at investment firms, um, you know, that really make decisions. Uh, same for uh, Nikodem and Serfon Stani. So we all have some sort of connection outside in industry so that we can bring in the experience that um, these people have and that they can uh, grant you. And on top of that, we, we, we create our own case studies from experiences that we've had in the past and uh, um, and we allow you to discuss about it. In my particular uh, module, I will give you uh, uh, case studies and I will give you some um, tasks in which you need to sort of decide where to invest. I know Yolanda does something similar. So um, it, it becomes very real, very practical, very much uh, a practitioner uh, sort of um, discipline, let's say, yeah? Is it okay, Daniel? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Thanks. All right, thank you, uh, Andrew. Uh, hi, can you hear me? All right. Yeah, of course. Um, so I was just so if, if I were to do the program, I'd be looking to do it um, as as part time, uh, yeah. as part time student. So I was wondering if you could touch a bit more on what what that would look like for a part time student, and then also actually whether in in, in your opinion. Um, if, if part-time students kind of get as much out of it as, as if you were doing it full-time, because obviously yeah. with full-time, you can kind of, you know, chuck everything into it and dedicate it, that whole year to it. Whereas with part-time, yeah. obviously you've got other commitments as well. So you might not get as much out of it. Just whether you had any thoughts about that. Yeah. So, so um, how it looks, it's obviously uh, half the load of, 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 of time in lectures and in studying uh, that, that you have in, in each particular term. Um, so if, if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know exactly, exactly uh, uh, how it looks like, but it's mainly that you will have uh, two of the mandatory uh, modules in the first term and one in the second term and the same for the next year. And then you will do the, the dissertation, you will write the dissertation. Um, so, so it's just half of the of the workload uh, in each year. Um, whether it's more or less beneficial to be um, a part-time student, I don't think there's, um, on the one hand, you will have two sets of colleagues, so you will get to know more people in the, uh, in, in the classroom itself, and because you will be working with one cohort first and then another cohort. So in that sense, I think there's even perhaps an advantage because a lot of this is about interacting with your own peers. Um, however, as you say, you will not be prepared already the first year. So that first cohort will come out on the industry to, you know, to get a job, whereas you will still be trying to get uh, your degree. Um, so, you know, there's, there, I, I see pros and cons to, to it, uh, but in any case, I think they both net out and you will have just a, just as good as an experience, uh, an experience as, as your colleagues doing uh, the full time. Uh, will have. If anything, you might even get uh, more time to reflect on what you studied, which is, I think, something uh, that is, um, you know, underrated, if anything, and, and it's something that we all need more time to really reflect on what it is that we've learned. Um, so, yeah, 
it, it'll be for you to decide, but uh, it's uh, I think it's fantastic to do it part time, just as as good as doing it full time. To be honest. Perfect. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, I think we have a uh, something in the chat. Um, right. Yes, we have. Let me see. Uh, apologies if this has already been mentioned for the part-time study option is any of the teaching remote or will uh, no all teaching is in campus this is important that you know all teaches or all teaching happens uh in campus in in uh, UCR East um except for the uh the electives the electives they might uh take place at the Bloomsbury campus um what else uh, that, um, that was Nicholas, from Jagger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, uh, Nicholas. Yeah. I think I have dropped uh, some of the questions um, in the chat. I believe though, uh, all the common questions that prospective students need to learn about applying and studying in this course. So, um, all right. Okay. Yeah. Can you? So, thanks, Nicholas, for, for a very so, Yeah. Here are some questions that will help uh, prospective students. Uh, so, what do you look for in an application? What would make my application stand out? Is the application process competitive? It is very competitive. Uh, we receive uh, hundreds of applications for about 40 to 50 uh, places. So it is very, very competitive indeed. Um, what we look for, we look for, um, we look for people that have a passion for real estate that needs to to be stated very clearly. Um, they either want to learn everything there is about it and have a very specific reason for it, or uh, they already know and want to dig deeper and they're already industry participants, for example, um, uh, as, as has been asked before. Um, and what will stand out in, the, in an application will be uh, whether you have a programming background, whether you have a numerical background, but also if you have a practitioner side background or if you have um, uh, studied or uh, are, are immersed in the real estate world in any way. Um, how many students are in this course? What are the class sizes? So it's about 40 students. This past two years, it was 40. Before it was 30. So next year, we are aiming for uh, 40 students, uh, between 40 and 50 students uh, again. So um, we don't just admit people so that we get a larger cohort. We admit the people that, are, um, that stand out with uh, their qualifications and and uh, 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 yeah, and their passion for for this particular industry. Um, what are the career uh, prospects for this course? What are recent graduates going on to do? So we've had people. Uh, we have students uh, going, for example, to the big consultants, say uh, Savills. Uh, we have one at JLL. Um, we have a student going on to a private equity fund. We have another student working for a bank. Um, we have many students going back to their home countries and and uh, um, taking care of their of their family states, for example. That that has been um, what it it seems to be one of the major um, drivers for people taking this this more this this program. Uh, so yeah, many 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 things there, but in particular, a lot of uh, finance and investment side, some consultancy. So things that really will, uh, you know, appreciate your uh, skills, that, the skills that, that we're teaching here. Um, what does a typical week on this course look like? Well, depends when, um, during the first, for example, this week, let, let's put it like that. Uh, on Monday morning, you would have had uh, analytical property valuation there with Nico, with Nicodem, you are uh, learning everything about how to value a building uh, with guest lectures and the like. That happens uh, the whole for the whole Monday, so 9 to uh, 4 p.m. Um, uh, on Wednesday, you have the data analysis course. Uh, it's uh, only... Uh, two to three hours, depends on the time of the of the term, because there are some classes that are longer than others, but uh, on Wednesday, you will have the data analysis course, and on Thursday, you will have the finance and the urban economics courses, both of two hours. Um, 
uh, and, and and then you will you know you will get some time in between to study. You will get uh, given uh, you will be given some homework to do um, to bring for next session, etc. So that that's kind of the intensity that this court that this program demands. Um, then you move on to reading week, where you will study in order to uh, prepare for the assessment, which uh, depends on the module, but goes from uh, a written exam to uh, written essays to a group presentation. So it can be any of those things. Uh, and we are doing all of those things, depending on, on the module that you take. Um, Internship, opportunities for internship work experience. So you will be exposed to people from the industry. Uh, and through us, you will have a large network of individuals um, that, that you might be able to access. So yes, of course, there are prospects and there is uh, opportunities for both internships and work experience. It's not something that we have uh, formally as a program. But clearly, it's if if you are uh, if you're smart about it, you will be surrounded by people that can uh, uh, give you opportunities in, in any time. Um, so uh, hi, I uh, so Dandy uh, asks hi. I wonder what softwares will we learn like Stata, Ebus, and R language. We are uh, learning primarily R. Um, so the data analysis module and the spatial data analysis module both are taught in R. In the, in the spatial analysis one, you also get ArcGIS. Um, I think in the data analysis module, you also get some uh, data, uh, but mainly is uh, R, because R has the, has the quality of being, uh, well, first uh, open source, uh, but also it has a very... Um, it has a programmable feeling to it, you know, even though it's not C++ or it's not Python, but but still is, uh, say, rigorous enough in its in its programming, and you get amazing visuals and you get ex really really efficient uh, calculations uh, using R. It is a steep learning curve if you don't know um, this this uh, this particular language, uh, but it's one that will stay with you for the rest of your lives and it'll be very, very uh, useful, not just using R, but also for learning other um, uh, languages. Uh, what else? Uh, and that's it. Okay, so Fun has um, posted a link for information about entry requirement, the application process module, uh, key contacts, et cetera, in the, in the chat box. Yeah. So, anyone else has any other questions? Andrew, you have the the hand up, but I think that's the legacy from before. Even yeah, <laughs> excellent. Uh, well, with that, then I will thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Um, I enjoyed a lot talking to you and and, and letting you know about our program. Our, I hope you're inspired and you and you have. Um, uh, the urge to 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 apply and and I will be thrilled to see you uh, next year uh, during during our, our teaching. Um, so see you next year if uh, if so. Good afternoon. Thank you very very much. It was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Denisos. <laughs>